Okay, these first eight are, are big boys. And they haven't done too bad. Gotten plenty of tomatoes off of them. And for the middle of July, they're still holding up fairly well, but you can see the heat and humidity is taking its toll. It always does. But there's still some green tomatoes in here. I don't see any blooms that are open right now. And I'll... I'll, uh, I'll put some text in the video as to whether they're determined or non-determinate. But you can see, they're taller than I am. They did pretty good. And you can see how I have trimmed them up from the ground. That helps a little, but it doesn't fix things. So, we're doing fairly well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this last small one right here is the last, last one of the big boys. All right, next up we got Goliath. I'm really impressed with them. Now that one there, there's a lot going on there. But with this weather that we're having right now, it's understandable. I've been spraying these things fairly regularly. I've still got lots of green tomatoes. Got some I need to pick here in a few minutes. Um, bugs making more bugs. Now you can see, I got lots of little green ones still coming. So hopefully we're going to have tomatoes for a while yet. So, I put a blue piece of blue tape on. That's the first, first of the glass. So one, two, three, four. This little guy down here is what they call a 42-day tomato. And that one was stunted. It just did not want to grow. But it made some tomatoes. I had a glass here that died, and I put that in its place. So more glass. About to fall over on me. I need to get out here and work on that a little bit. So, got some okra here, and as you can see, the rest of the row is gone. That's what the rabbits did for me. They mowed it down. So, all right, so, blue flag, and that's the last Goliath right there. All right, so then next up we got two boxcar wheelies, and these things make these yellow orange tomatoes. I have not tried one yet. I may try that tonight. Next up we got six celebrities. Now the celebrities are a hybrid and they've usually done pretty good for me. I get a lot of tomatoes off of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. They're holding up fairly well. Like I say, this is the middle of July. And there's been a lot of years that by the end of July I didn't have any tomatoes left. Nothing. Shut down from all the disease everything that gets a hold of them. We've got it all here in the south. All right, next up we got two more of the boxcar wheelies. And I started all these from seed this year. Another boxcar wheelie, and this is another one of the 42 day tomatoes. I'm not really impressed with them. They don't make very big tomatoes, but they, they taste good. And here, this, this, this plant right here, I want you to look. It's showing less sign of disease. Than any other plants that I have. Top to bottom. I mean you, you can find a little bit in there. 
a little bit of sign but not much this is a homestead I had some seed from 2014, 10 years old, and I threw about 50 or 60 of them on a, on a paper towel, wet them down, a little bit of peroxide solution to see if I could germinate them, and there was three or four that germinated out of all those seed, and two of them actually made plants, and one of them just popped out of the uh, seed starter mix, and it just curled up and died. And this one lived. This is the only one that lived. And this is the one plant in my garden. I don't remember how many generations of these seed I had. But I can promise you I'm going to have some more. This plant has held up to everything way better. It's been producing quite a few tomatoes. They're really good tasting tomatoes. There's a little bit. You see a little bit of, it's hard to say some of it, whether it's disease or whether it's just die off. Because you're going to have some leaves that are going to die off. It don't last forever. It usually That usually starts at the bottom too because those are the oldest leaves. So, I don't see any new blooms. I see a lot of young ones. So we'll just have to see how long we have. How long we get tomatoes off of this one? I said today's July 13th. So this plant has done better than all these other varieties this year. And that's one of the reasons I saved seed from these years ago was because they did they did do well for me. So I'm gonna continue to do these. I'm gonna take some seed from this one. And I feel pretty sure about the pollination on the plants because I pollinated them when they were young and the first flowers first started opening up. I came through here with an electric toothbrush and pollinated every flower that was that was ready to be pollinated. So I feel pretty good about saving seed off of them. I'm probably also going to clone this plant. And then I can sock some of the blooms and be absolutely sure I get a true pollination off of that plant and go from there. But I'm definitely going to be saving seed from this and from the, this the homestead, and from the Goliaths down here. They can be kind of hard to contain. I've been tying them up, and I've got these clips and everything I put on them. But they just keep on growing. I'm almost positive that these, that these, uh, Goli that these Goliaths are uh, indeterminate. I'll let you know, um, but I'm pretty sure that they are. But they're holding up pretty well. I mean, they're showing some signs of disease and everything down low, but the tops are just absolutely beautiful. And if, you, if they were stretched out to their full length, they're about seven foot tall, I guess. But there's lots of tomatoes in there. Still, I have picked a lot of tomatoes off of these plants. They have really produced well. They have really, really produced well for me. Look at them all in there. Yes, they've done a good job for me this year. So I'll be saving seed from those and the homestead variety. And so. <clears throat> I'm gonna clone this plant, these plants, one of the, probably both of these, and I'm gonna clone that one homestead. And I'm gonna save seed from those, and those are gonna be my primary varieties, probably from now on. Because they've consistently done better for me than anything else. Now the celebrities do fairly well. They produce a lot of tomatoes, but usually by July, it's about over, for just about all of them. But they're doing really well this year. I've been feeding these plants about every seven to 10 days. I give them, I take a five gallon bucket. I put five of the big scoops of miracle Grow tomato in there. I take 
10 aspirin, that's two per gallon, mix them up in a jar and pour that in that five gallon bucket. And then I take two grams per gallon of potassium humate and I put that in there too and mix it all up and I feed each one of these plants about a half a gallon at a time. Uh, I give that to my peppers and everything else. Them, them jalapeno peppers over there is a whole nother story. They're, they're just insane how many they're producing. So I do that. That's what I feed them. And then I've been spraying them. Every time we have a, a an event where they get wet, like whether I water, because I do water from overhead, or if we have rain, I, I spray. And of course, I bought me a fogger a couple weeks ago. I'm using that now, which works absolutely great. And I do it with uh, about six to eight ounces of peroxide per gallon of water after an event where they've been soaked and wet, you know, because I want to kill anything that's getting started on them. You're fighting a losing battle, but it does help. And so after a rain event, I use that. And then if I have a couple more days of good clear weather, I mix uh, neem oil and uh, Castile soap and I spray them down really really good with that and they have it has made a big difference they've held up a lot better this year than they usually do so those are the varieties that I'm going to be sticking with that doesn't mean I won't put a couple of something else out here you know but I, I believe in planting a variety simply because something's always going to do well and something's going to do bad just about every year but the homesteads and the uh, Goliaths. Those are going to be my two main varieties. They produce big, nice, pretty tomatoes. I love it when you can get a tomato. One slice covers a piece of bread. I love that. And I've been getting a lot of those kind this year. So, anyway, I mean, these things are taller than the corn. So, anyway, I'm going to show you these... Uh, these jalapenos over here. There, did they have produced an insane amount of peppers this year? They just look. They're just hanging there, and I picked. I have probably picked two and a half, close to three five gallon buckets full full five gallon buckets full of jalapeno peppers off of these plants it's insane and the okra would have done really well if the rabbits hadn't clipped me off so bad but I still get, I still get six or eight pods a day and at the end of the week that's a quart bag so it's all right anyway and then to talk about the tomatoes. And no. There you have it. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. I will be getting back to my normal content very soon. Uh, it's been a really, really busy summer. I'm trying to get my boat straight and squared away so I can get it back in the water and bring you some fishing videos. And uh, deer season is. 55 maybe days away it's not far so I started the feeders back up started a feed, one of the feeders back up today and got all got some cameras set up and we'll see what's going on down there on the farm 55 days till bow season so appreciate you guys watching the videos and uh, until you see me in the next one, there you go. That's one of the culprits. That's one of the reasons I ain't gonna open it right there. <coughs> I got a herd of them too.